Hello and welcome to the Utica Home Track Series Royal Rumble here at the Snowstorm Speedway in Nome, Alaska. This is a very special event, and boy, is it cold outside. The drivers are absolutely freezing. There's defending champion Jamie Murphy, who's completely utterly freezing outside. A lot of the drivers are having a difficult time with this track, but this should be an interesting event. The rules go by, as I mentioned. Right now, the driver who wins this race will get five bonus points for the championship competition run, which doesn't seem like a big deal. It's only five points, but five points can go a long way. Seth Cole, talking to Jeff Evans before the race, Seth Cole is the creator of this series as we start off racing with Joshua Michaels and William Duncan. Joshua Michaels, if you notice there, he had a rookie symbol next to his name. He is still considered a rookie because last year he did not run more than seven races. He only ran five, I believe. So Joshua Michaels gets another shot at the Rookie of the Year Championship, which could be a good thing. He has an opportunity to get some bonus points for Rookie of the Race. You can see he is sliding in. This track is a very unique racetrack given that it is very easy to slide off. There's no walls and there's snow on both sides. This is located in a giant natural depression in the ground. Now if you may have noticed there, Joshua Michaels kind of went off track there, but he did not completely go off the racing surface, which is required. We have sensors on all the cars on the very leftmost side of the vehicle to make sure that they are staying on track. Joshua Michaels currently leading in that number 13 car as we look at William Duncan, car number 83, who is also a rookie. He did not run the full schedule last year. Connor Atwood ran the road courses and since he came in later in the season, majority of the races were road courses. So William Duncan did not got, get to drive as much. He will be driving the full schedule this year in that newly painted number 83, which looks really nice. I really like that car. Now, uh, in the first round here, we only have two drivers on track, so I don't think we'll see too much action in this round. It's supposed to, going to be a cool down, because these drivers, they want to make it to the end. They have picked horrible drawing positions, as we have a total of 56 cars in this Royal Rumble. The biggest w Royal Rumble for stock car racing I believe I've ever seen. I think the most before this was 42. I know the NNSCRA Royal Rumbles um, are pretty popular, and they get the 42 card. This one's trying to top it, though it lacks kind of the theatrics. We couldn't bring our entire graphic department out here to Nome, Alaska. It's very difficult. But William Duncan, car number 83, starting to pull in behind Joshua Michaels. Joshua Michaels sliding a little bit through the turns there. Now, uh, this should be an interesting battle for Rookie of the Year going into the Youth Home Trick Series season. As we have a lot of a lot of really new faces, like drivers like that I even haven't even seen in other series before. We're closing in on the final lap of this particular round, and it looks like everyone's gonna stay in. The sensors did not go off on either car, so we should be good. And they crossed the line. Let's take a look at the next round. Megan Curley, car number 20 for the Gas Tank Engineering Incorporated team. Now this car was driven last year by Casey Ockenron, but after his unfortunate demise at an Indianapolis race in a different series, um, it was split between Inman J, Megan Curley, and Mac Corio. Megan Curley did the best of those drivers, so she got the ride for this season. Now here comes Megan Curley running close on the back bumper of William Duncan. They run three wide coming out of the turn, and William Duncan's going to get forced up above the track. The sensor goes off. He is out of this race. A shame so early he gets eliminated as Megan Curley continues around the racetrack. Car number 20 battling with Joshua Michaels on the outside. It's a really rough race right now. Megan Curley is, uh, is pretty aggressive on the course. Not the kind of driver that just kind of hangs back. She really wants to win a race and will do anything to get there. But oh no, close call by Megan Curley, but one tire stays on the racing surface, so she is fine. Here we go, it's awfully close. Joshua Michaels could eliminate her here, but wait, was that it? No, not off track yet. The sensor did not go off. William Duncan's gonna get behind her and it's gonna send her loose. She goes off the racing surface and Megan Curley's out in her debut round. Now Joshua Michaels, the only one on track still in the event. What uh, Duncan and Curley might do is they may try and eliminate him if they can get nearby. 
Another issue that a lot of drivers are going to be having, they want to eliminate people, but they don't want to tear up their race cars at the same time. A lot of these teams do not have a lot of funding, and they don't have a lot of backup cars. So they want to make sure they save these cars for when they actually count, the actual season races. So you'll see people trying to knock each other off the course, but trying not to do it in a way that would wreck themselves. So William Duncan, especially, with a relatively underfunded team, needs to be extra careful. And uh, our cameraman decided to cut to the pace car there. Cut to the earlier. I think that particular cameraman seems to like the design of that pace car. But uh, anyway, Joshua Michaels still in the lead. Megan Curley trailing close behind him. Michaels has a really good car, and uh, I hope he has this for the rest of the season because this would be uh, very helpful. We head on to our final lap as Megan Curley um, tries to fake him out off the racetrack. It's close, but the sensor does not go off. Car number 13, Joshua Michaels. Um, I've seen a couple of his his uh, sponsors for later in the year, and he has a lot of sponsors. He was really busy during the off Oh, no! He's going to get forced off the track in the final turn. And it looks like all three drivers from this round are all going to go out, which is amazing that this early, everyone will eliminate themselves. Let's take a look at the next round. Chris Aurelio and John Cedino are the two drivers that come on course due to every driver in the last round being eliminated. Now, Chris Aurelio, um, unfortunately, he will not be running the full schedule this year. He will not be going to the foreign race tracks, which will uh, put a damper on his championship run, but the funding is just not there. He is running some Rallycross Series races. Uh, actually, he's running for the championship, and that, what am I saying? So we'll have to see uh, how that works out for him. He's trying to build up the funds necessary to uh, run the full season. Michael Aurelio, his brother, will also be running a uh, majority of the schedule, with the exception of the two Super Speedway races. Those are going to go to uh, Johnson Benton's. But the 27 car, a, a very snazzy looking car, and if you notice, the, all these cars in this season, in case you didn't realize, are new model cars. These are 2011 models instead of the 2000 models we were running last year. Chris Aurelio, he's starting to lose John Cedino, though. This car is not up to full speed in comparison to Citadino, but it, he could just be playing it safe. He, he doesn't want to eliminate himself that early because he wants to get a good cash prize by the end of this, and unfortunately, he goes out relatively early in the event. So he's got a long way to go to reach the end of the 56 car entry list. Now, here is John Citadino, who had a horrible 2012. I mean, he could not catch a break. If it could, if it could happen to him, it happened to him, and he lost heavily. He finished in the teens in the standings just after I'm um, in 2011 running for the championship. He's hoping that this can be a redemption run. He's very confident in his team because he's bringing back Russell R. Curry who won him a couple races last year and he signed Matt Evans who won the three in a row last year. So that was a great silly season game for the Sydney O. Ed Bunch. They have Matt Evans driving abilities, Russell R. Curry's driving abilities and engine parts and whatever John does. <laughs> But at the current moment, John Cedino having a great run, really plowing ahead of Chris Aurelio, and I believe I overheard him earlier. That is going to be his strategy today. Be out front and stay away from all the other cars, which is a pretty simple strategy, but effective. And you can do this better here than at Talladega, where the previous Royal Rumbles have been held for other series. Because this track, though it's technically a super speedway, it's kind of like Pocono in Michigan, where you don't need to draft to get ahead. You can just go on your own car power, and the 72 car definitely has the power as he's pulling away from Chris Aurelio. As we head down on this final lap, I believe both of these cars are going to stay in this event unless something goes horribly wrong for one of them. So here we go. Coming out of the last turn, the Expedix Chevy driven by John Cedino with a significant lead over Chris Aurelio in the 27. Yeah, hey, I just noticed it reversed numbers, 72 and 27. And he crosses the line, that ends the segment. Let's go to the next round. Now we've added Jeff Evans to the lineup, and boy has Jeff Evans had quite the Utica Home Track Series career. Now Jeff Evans started off in the first season. He was one of the inaugural drivers in the first race for uh, his own team, Death Knight Racing, with teammate Megan Curley, who went out earlier. He did okay, but then started to struggle, and he eventually pulled himself out of the ride in favor of uh, Road Race A's Ryan Cook and Matt Corio. 
He kept the team running in the 2012, but midway through the year, the team lost funding. He had to close down shop. He went to the regional series and started running small dirt track events and uh, small short track events around the country. He built up the funds and he bought a backup car from the Benoit Motorsport Group. It was one of the old Adam Dunlap backup cars, the team they just closed down. He entered it in Oster Reich Ring, and now he's been building up the funds to run this year for his own team in a single car effort, and that is a snazzy looking car. I really love that paint scheme. Unfortunately, the car does not seem to be running too well, despite its good looks. He is currently trailing Aurelio and Cidino you know, by a heavy margin, while Aurelio, I believe, is catching up pretty well with uh, Cidino. You are allowed to make adjustments to your race car between rounds in this series for this particular Royal Rumble, and Chris Aurelio obviously made some good adjustments on that vehicle. It's running much faster than it did in the previous round. Jeff Evans is going to need to work on it a little bit. That number 77 car is really trailing far behind. We also saw Jeff Evans talking to Seth Cole earlier today, trying to get some strategies about how to run in this series for this particular Royal Rumble. And uh, I think he got some good notes as we focus on Chris Aurelio. Running in second place, we just mentioned earlier that he was having a much better car for this particular round. And it, it's always good to see see the Aurelios doing good because they're they're one of those teams. They just they come to the track each week. They bring their own equipment. They they've been really clawing and fighting to stay in the series. And it's always good to see when they see their car is performing at utmost potential. As he crosses the, as they begin to cross the line for the final lap of the race, looks like John Cedino's still setting the pace here today. He really doesn't want to compete. He really wants to just stay in it for as long as he can and see if he can make that car live to the end. Chris Aurelio falling close behind. He's not really the aggressive driver, but uh, he could get a little bit aggressive for the Royal Rumble. Who knows? Um, it's still pretty early, and it's we're still kind of in the cool-down phase, trying to just make sure everyone stays in the event. Once we start getting more cars packed up onto this racetrack, room starts getting shorter. It could end up in a little more action. We finished the round, let's go to the next round. Now we add Matt Duell, one of our new rookies to this event. Now Matt Duell is going to be running in the Rallycross series as a replacement for Billy Bishop on the City of Motorsport team. And uh, I believe John Cedino, the leader, is looking forward to that. Billy Bishop wrecked a lot of his race cars. Hopefully Matt Duell will not wreck as many. Also, Matt Duell is running on RGE Motorsports in this series as a replacement for Estavas Cortez, who uh, is not running this season. So, it's uh, he's he's kind of the replacement driver, basically. He's uh, we should call him the replacer. Actually, that would be a good nickname. Matt the Replacer Duel. That's a good nickname. I think you'll like that. But he passes, he's trying to pass John Cedino on the inside, and despite John Cedino being his boss in the Rallycross series, he's not going to show him mercy today. Seth Cole says it a lot. All team ties are kind of broken when we go into the Royal Rumble. And it's any man's game, or woman's, there's a lot of women in this series. As Matt Duell racing Cedino relatively aggressively. That car is running very well today. We switch to the helicopter cam that's flying above here. And Nome, Alaska. We managed to bring the helicopters out here. One of the few luxuries we have out here. We don't have many warm places. We have a cars and a couple tents, but we, hey, we brought a helicopter. As you can see, kind of the scope here, Chris Aurelio is starting to fall back a little bit. They tried tweaking it a little bit more, and it seemed to not work in their favor as they start the trail behind, and Jeff Evans is battling with them. There is Chris Aurelio, as we just mentioned. Now Jeff Evans trying to sneak up behind him, but uh, he, he's still not, he doesn't have that formula with the car just yet, Jeff Evans. That car is not going fast enough. He's, he's not going to get a black flag for going off pace, but uh, he's just not as quick as these guys in front here. Which makes Aurelio feel, feel a little better. No, it's an underfunded team, and they, they like it when, they, when the car is running slower than them. Though really, what driver doesn't like it when the other car is running slower? Aurelio. I believe he might be able to survive this round. He's kind of all by himself at the moment. It's the same with Jeff Evans, unless something catastrophically fails on their vehicle. 
as we head across the line, we switch back to Matt Duell, who's really racing John Cedino hard. And uh, John Cedino was not expecting this kind of challenge. No one really knew what Matt Duell. Oh! John Cedino almost gets edged off the racetrack by Matt Duell. The sensor did not go off, however. So he is still in the race, just barely. It was probably by a couple centimeters that he stayed on course. Now, uh, I want to mention the officials have been pretty lenient today about the drivers because when testing, we realized that the part of the groove is out on the outside lane there. John said, you know, close again. We'll have to see if that one actually is off the track. See, this round ends as we take a look at John Cedino's car and see if it was on track or not, and it is, so he stays with them now. Let's go to the next round. Trek Togger, car number 60, the runner-up for Rookie of the Year last season, is out on track, and new colors on that vehicle. Um, a lot of new colors for the uh, Gas Tank Engineering Corporate team. They had major sponsor change uh, at the end of the year. Red Bull left for uh, Connor Atwood. As they go here, he's trying to make it three wide. I don't think that's going to be too smart of an idea. Jeff Evans clips him. That's going to send him off track. Jeff Evans eliminates Trek Togger. Oh, and Trek Togger, he just got into the event. Well, we lost one gas tech engineering car in their first round in. And oh no, Chris Aurelio also gets pushed off track by Jeff Evans. And there's a little bit of a graphical glitch as Chris Aurelio is almost pushed off again. So two drivers eliminated so far in this round. And uh, it's a shame. The, Chris Aurelio was really excited about this event going in. And he's not going to be able to finish. And also, Trek Togger is also going to be sent, sent home packing. Now there's Jeff Evans, and also I want to point out, a driver that's eliminated can still eliminate other drivers. They don't need to pull off track. As you can see here, Chris Aurelio tried to edge Jeff Evans off the track a little bit, but it does not work. Jeff Evans still stays on. That center is not going to go off, but I don't think Chris Aurelio knows that because he's not going after him again. I think he feels that he's eliminated Jeff Evans. Though the scoring monitor does not say he has. So Chris Aurelio is still driving around. He's not going to go after Jeff Evans anymore. Jeff Evans snickering to himself that he's still in the race. Now there's Trek Togger. He's way behind the field, but he can still eliminate people if he if um, they catch him as lap traffic or if somehow he catches up. And it's kind of a shame for Trek Togger. He was hoping for a big thing going into this event. He's going to have to wait for the actual season itself. John Cittadino, car number 72, has a huge lead over Matt Duell. Matt Duell made some adjustments that I think harmed the car, and I think he's he's pretty upset about that. He's not too happy over the radio with his crew members for making the ill-fated adjustment. He was trying to make that car grip a little better, but it turns out it slowed it down. John said, you know, in the lead, and his strategy of staying ahead is working so far. I wouldn't be surprised if, if he can keep this pace. He might just be able to make it to the end at this rate. Have to see as we head to the final lap for this round. Two cars eliminated so far. Jeff Evans, very close call. Matt Duell running in second position. A little while back, you see uh, Chris Aurelio trying to catch up to him, but I do not think Chris Aurelio is going to be able to catch up to the 88 car. It's go the 88 car is going slower, but not that slow. As we round the last turn on the track, John Cedino looks like he's going to go to an easy victory. And Matt Duell is going to finish second. Chris Arroyo and Trek Togger are out this round as we go on to the next round. Alex DeMarco, one of our many new rookies in this series, is out on track now in the number 51 Ford from Monster Madness Racing. As you can see, he's already making a jab at Jeff Evans. But it's not going to work. He stays on course. Alex DeMarco. I actually don't know much about Alex DeMarco. He's a relatively new face. I have not really seen him in any other series. Um, maybe we can get the stat guy to see what he was in before this. At the current moment, I, I only know him for this. And I think I saw him on a couple sign of videos. But uh, have not. I don't recall exactly for what. This is a single car entry. And they're trying to make a name for themselves in the sport. You can see Jeff Evans takes a swipe at the bumper of the 51 car. And now the 51 car trying to catch up to Matt Duell, who's still not as fast as John Cedino. Alex DeMarco going to pass the 88 car. At least he's trying to. Matt Duell battling to the outside. Matt Duell 
have been pretty feisty this event, and uh, is not really willing to give up positions too easily. Though the position you finish in does not matter, it all counts on the eliminations. The only round where position matters is the final round. You can see they round the course again. John Cedino pulling away as he usually does. Matt Duell and Jeff Evans in hot pursuit of Alex DeMarco. We might see elimination here. We've seen elimination with three cars, and we could see elimination with four. Our highest amount in one round so far has been five. I think the record overall between all of the rumbles is about ten. I, I think that's right. I'm not exactly sure, though. I'm not, I don't have those particular stats with me. Here we go. We crossed the line, and... This Alex DeMarco, I, I, he, he seems kind of promising the way he's been running so far. He's a very competitive one, as you can see, based on his uh, actions on track so far. He will need to qualify his way in for the Bristol event, however. He did not race any races last season and will, is not qualified for the Bristol event. He's got to race his way into that, and we have a lot, a big entry list for Bristol, so it's going to be a little difficult. But I think Alex DeMarco might be able to do it. Have to see as we cross the line another time. The line's kind of in an odd position on this racetrack, if you notice, is right at the beginning of turn one. That's to allow a lot of uh, straightaway racing on that final stretch going to the line. And this track itself is kind of mild after Phoenix. It, it looks kind of like that from a sky view, only it's much bigger. It's a super speedway. About two miles, I believe. You can see the uh, certain turn there and even the walls kind of look like Phoenix. They kind of have that bluish walls. We crossed the line for the final time ending this particular round. Alex DeMarco's in so it was Matt Jewell, Jeff Evans, and John Cedillo. Let's bring in the next driver. Here is the veteran Seth Cole, the man who invented the Royal Rumble. Here today. And whoa, Jeff Evans! So close! Almost knocked off the racing surface, but he's still going. Now, Seth Cole. He ran last season in the 5 car, but switched to the 52 car this season. So, a huge number switch for him and a sponsor change, too. Hershey's on the car, and uh, I really like that car. I like that. I like the shade of brown. Very chocolatey looking car. By the Colonel and Seth Cole setting the pace. Beating John Cedino and Alex DeMarco and Matt Duell are closing in on John Cittadino. Now, Seth Cole, he never actually won any race. Well, he didn't win any race last season, nor did he ever win Rookie of the Race last year, but he finished well in the rookie standings. He is not a rookie this year, however. He ran most of the schedule. But Seth Cole is kind of far from a rookie. He's been in many racing series and is the chairman of his own, so... I expect good things out of him, and he's locked into Bristol, so he doesn't have to worry. Alex DeMarco, running in third place. He's having a very good run this this round as he tries to pass John Cedino. Got sent a little loose by Seth Cole. Here we go. He's battling for John Cedino's spot. John Cedino is not running as well as he thought he would be. I, I don't think they made any adjustments under the caution, so it might be just that... Seth Cole and Alex DeMarco have improved on their cars and they're very competitive against John Cedino. As we head down to the straightaway, and Seth Cole's gonna eliminate John Cedino. John Cedino, one of the favorites to win this from the start, is gonna go out due to Seth Cole, and Seth Cole eliminated him like a pro without wrecking his race car or wrecking Cedino's car. Very sportsmanlike way of eliminating someone. Now, if John Cedino can still take revenge on Seth Cole, and trying to eliminate him as we see Alex Burrow go to the lead and Matt Duell gets a little squirrely and almost gets turned off track by Jeff Evans but he does not go off track the sensor does not go off Seth Cole is going up to try and battle with Alex DeMarco may try to eliminate him as well the rookie on the single car team Seth Cole is also his own team actually it's kind of a battle of team owners here with the exception of Matt Duell four of these five drivers own the team that they're racing on, so uh, this series, it's very good with promoting owner driver. We are on the final lap right now as John Cedino, he tried to eliminate Seth Cole, missed. John Cedino rolled up to get Alex DeMarco 
and it's going to send Alex DeMarco off the track by just a slight margin. I think only a couple centimeters off course as we go to the next round. Zachary Robinson, car number five, one of the Robinson brothers who have entered this year. He's driving the number five car, which uh, is, a number, was, is the number that Seth Cole drove last year, so it's going to be kind of funny for Seth Cole seeing that number five in his rearview mirror. This is actually an old Seth Cole car. They, they bought one of the old five cars that was auctioned off. They uh, beefed it up, and now they have this really nicely, nice-looking number five car with Lowe's Cobalt on there. Very good paint scheme. Now, Zachary Robinson running for Rookie of the Year. He's going to have to try try and race his way in next week, I believe. As Matt Duell, car number 88, who was running so good, kind of struggling again. As Jeff Evans, who has been traditionally slower than the rest of the pack, passes him. So we'll have to see what Matt Duell does. He's got to try and... He, he, he feels kind of embarrassed in the car right now because... Jeff Evans has not been running well at all. Not to take any credit away from Jeff Evans for going on track, but uh, statistically, Jeff Evans has not had a fast race car. Matt Duell running kind of sluggishly today. Zachary Robinson is not running sluggishly, though. He's trying to keep pace with Seth Cole, and he's doing a relatively good job at it. Staying behind Seth Cole, but not trying to get up in Seth Cole's grill, as it were. He is just trying to play it safe this this round and uh, hoping to make it into the future rounds. There's only four cars on the track right now. He feels why risk it, so he's going to put some distance between him and the other cars. The only real battle is between Duel and Evans on the racetrack, and that's more of a battle of pride for Duel. Seth Cole is your leader at the current moment and though leading the race does not count for anything it, it kind of shows that you have a fast car in the preseason also when you're running by yourself here and you're in a round where you're not eliminating yourself this is really good training for the super speedway races later on in the year we, we go to two we go to daytona and this is actually a schedule change we are no longer going to chaldea we're going to the sierra speedway in sierraville california which is a very interesting track. It's run backwards. It's all right turns. So that should be interesting to see the strategy on that track, especially because they're going to have to be pitting backwards there. So that could throw a monkey wrench into the championship battle as we scroll back to Matt Duell and Jeff Evans in their battle. And Matt Duell has overtaken Jeff Evans in the 77 car. And uh, Matt Duell, at the current moment, he doesn't really want to get into the whole elimination thing at the moment. He wants to play it safe and prove that he has a fast car. Which this round, it was kind of slow. They're going to have to make some adjustments at the end there. We finish up this round as the final two cars cross the line. Let's meet our next driver. There is car number 10, the Kerbal Space Program Chevy of Russell Arcuri. It's a different looking car than last year with the American National car. Completely different colors and... Uh, going to be, it's going to be, I'm going to have to try and get used to identifying this car. I'm used to seeing him in that bright yellow and green car. But Russell R. Curie, a three-time winner in the Utah Track Series. He's an impressive driver, and he's close to eliminating Zachary Robinson, and he's clipping Jeff Evans and almost runs Seth Cole off the track. Russell R. Curie not hesitating with his aggression today, as he hits Jeff Evans again on the bumper. Russell Arcuri, an aggressive driver today. He really wants to win this. He's doing a different strategy than John Cedino. John Cedino, his uh, team owner and teammate, he went into this race saying, I'm going to play safe. I'm going to try and just gun it for the front and stay ahead of all the other cars. He, he's just smashing into every car he can. So we'll have to see how his strategy works. Seth Cole not leading this pack right now. He's kind of fallen back, and he's the second last car in the course. As uh, he is trying to keep out of this too wide stuff here, it's, it's not going to be good for him if uh, the too wide racing sends him off course, which it has done in the past in this Rumble. Matt Duell made, I don't know what kind of adjustment they made, but they made a great one as he is dominating in this race. He got off to a beautiful start and pulled way far ahead of the rest of the pack. 
Unfortunately, now he doesn't have a he doesn't have a draft, which I didn't think would be as much of an issue here. But apparently, drafting still is a helpful tool. As Russell R. Curie rides up to him, he's gonna turn. He turns Matt Duel, and Matt Duel is gonna go sliding all the way up the hill, almost reach the apex of the hill, and he's gonna slide down. Unfortunately, Matt Duel is out. That's the second RG Motorsports car to go out today. They only have one more bullet in their lineup, and that's Ray Takeda. It's coming up later. Now, Russell R. Curie leaves this event, and Russell R. Curie, a very good elimination on his part. He managed to take Matt Duel off the course without wrecking himself, and that's a very commendable. Well, not for, well, not in Matt Duel's but, uh, sense, but, uh, very commendable, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm crazy. I'm absolutely crazy. It's cold, and I have no idea what I'm talking about. But we get back to the racing action as Russell R. Curie leads the segment. Seth Cole following in a close second place. I believe Zachary Robinson's in third, and Jeff Evans is in fourth. We are going to cross the line for this round as Russell R. Curie goes down the straightaway. There's the line. And we get ready to add yet another driver to this lineup. Joseph Bryan, the teammate car to Seth Cole is on track now, and that is a different car than what he ran last season. Last year, he was just a replacement driver for Seth Cole, who had concussion-like symptoms at following a wreck at Daytona. Joseph Bryant proved himself to be a quite the race car driver in that, that event at Sonoma, getting a great fan, I believe 11th, and now he got his own ride in the Aquafina car, which is a car I absolutely adore, I really like the paint scheme on that one. Now, though his teammate Seth Cole is in this race, and whoa, whoa, Zachary Robinson almost sends him off the course there. Anyway, I was going to say, him and Seth Cole are teammates running in this event, but there's no team love here today. Seth Cole said it himself. Um, there is a lot of rivalry in this event, even between friends, so it's anyone's game, and Seth Cole may just turn Joseph Bryant off track if need be, as Joseph Bryant is going to make contact with the number five car of Zachary Robinson. So he is really looking for, whoa, three wide between Zachary Robinson, Seth Cole, and Jeff Evans. Jeff Evans is going to dive low. It's very dodgy. For Zachary Robinson, as Robinson slides up high on the racetrack, Jeff Evans is not giving him room, but it looks like Zachary Robinson is going to be safe this time. Though a lot of close calls there, Joseph Bryan almost got his first elimination of the day in that turn. Russell R. Curie kind of pulling at John Cedino. You know, his car is absolutely fast, and he is running away from the pack much faster than Seth Cole has ever been in this particular event. Now, Russell R. Curie, um, he's running with factory support from City and Red Motorsports. He's got help from Matt Evans, who knows a couple of the Benoit Motorsports secrets that made his car run so well. And he also has our Curatech Science Lab, which does a lot of the research and development for the Utica Home Track Series. They're the ones that make the track safe, make the cars fast, and make the entertainment fun without causing, costing any lives. So, Russell R. Curie, a very busy man, also likes to race too, and he's doing a good job of it here today. He is out in front of this field as they cross the line there. There's Joseph Bryan battling with Zachary Robinson, as Robinson not going to race him as cleanly now, seeing the amount of bumps that uh, Joseph Bryan gave him. As they're battling side by side, this should be an interesting battle. Joseph Bryan in the 80. Really battling on the outside with Zachary Robinson. There could be an elimination from Joseph Bryant. No. Joseph Bryant is going to save it, though. He almost goes off course. We are on our final lap, and we are about to cross the line to end off this round. And we do as... Whoa, 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 whoa! Joseph Bryant's going to turn Zachary Robinson after the event has already ended. It. Oh, that's a hard hit for Zachary Robinson. Up at the apex of the hill. Let's go on board with him. He slides, and uh, I think Joseph Bryant has made his first rival of the 2013 season with Zachary Robinson. Fortunately, Zachary Robinson will be able to fix that car for the next round. Let's meet our next driver. 
There is Austin Ogo, car number seven for Ogo Motorsports. Now, Austin Ogo has been running in the Utica Rallycross series for his own race team, Ogo Motorsports. However, he has not been having the best of luck. He's been having kind of an odd season with a good number of wrecks and poor times. He's hoping to improve on that for the second half of the year. Right now, he's focusing on the Utica Home Track Series and winning this Royal Rumble. That is a really nice looking car, the Minecraft car. And a fun fact, that picture on the side there, though, it's kind of hard to see with this camera. It's actually of a Minecraft village. And whoa! Russell R. Curie is apparently... has apparently been eliminated. Let's uh, scroll back. There is Russell R. Curie. We'll have to check back with uh, another camera angle to see uh, what exactly caused his elimination. But he's still in the event, and that is a shame. That car was running great. It was like Sidney's car, where it had a good shot of making it to the finish. Now he's running to the outside of Joseph Bryant in car number 80. And there's Jeff Evans, who's still in this event. And Jeff Evans has been in this event the longest of all the drivers currently on track. So that's kind of an achievement. That's, that's like a minor achievement for, for this race, trying to be on track for the longest amount of time. Here is Russell Curie tries to get Seth Cole a little loose, but it's not going to work there as Seth Cole is still running in this event. So that set off that sensor. Here we go. Underneath Seth Cole, this could be a good battle. Seth Cole is riding at the top of the track and is not going to go off. It's not going to set off that sensor, and he's still safe for now. Russell R. Curie coming to the line. Still have a couple more laps to go. As we scroll back to Joseph Bryant. Now, there was a confrontation on pit road between Robinson's crew and Bryant's crew. And they warned each other, you better stay away from us because we are not happy with you. Joseph Bryant, as you saw earlier, wrecking Zachary Robinson after the bell. So Joseph Bryant, he's kind of holding back to make sure Ro Zachary Robinson does not wreak vengeance on him in this particular round. So he is not running at full potential. He said over the radio that he's going to take it easy this round, run around with uh, Jeff Evans, who's still struggling today, trying to get that speed necessary to really be a factor. But Joseph Bryant, he's already made a rival, so very quick work by Joseph Bryant in making the season interesting. Now, Russell R. Curie. Right now, he's just trying to see if he can run fast just to prove that he has a fast race car. As we head to the line, Russell R. Curie is going to be the only car to go out in this round. Austin Ogo will win it. Whoa! Zachary Robinson almost wrecked Austin Ogo. I'm not sure what that was about. I don't believe Ogo raced uh, Robinson at badly. And let's see what happened to our Curie early in the race. Up oh, there it was. He went off track just a little bit. Now we see our next driver. Ray Takeda, car number 13X, the last of the RGE cars, so she can't mess this up. He, she's the last hope to win. Now she ran her first starts last season as a development driver. She was running in place of a injured Joshua Michaels, injured himself um, during a baseball tryout, I believe the story and she's gonna send Austin Ogo off the track and Austin Ogo is not gonna be happy about that he didn't get to stay in this event very long she runs down the straightaway anyway she uh, was, did such a good job she's allowed to oh no Joseph Bryant Joseph Bryant clips Ray Tacula and Jeff Evans sends all three of them off the track and this is four eliminations on the first lap Joseph Bryant is gonna eliminate himself along with Ray Tacula and Jeff Evans and Jeff Evans spun out and he's not particularly happy. He was hoping to be in this event longer. There's Austin Ogo, who's gotten back on course. But his day is done as well, and he's pretty far behind everyone else. He's going to have to try and qualify for the Bristol race if he wants to race again, as he catches up to Jeff Evans, who is back on track as well. Both drivers are okay, and the cars are still running. But hopes of winning this Royal Rumble are dashed. Due to an elimination to eliminations by Ray Takeda and Joseph Bryant, who also go out of this race. Seth Cole is the car in the lead right now, and after this, he will be the driver that's that's been there the longest. It's still racing. Zachary Robinson's running in second, but Seth Cole having an amazing run so far, and it's to be expected. 
He is an expert at the Royal Rumble, though I don't believe he did too well in the NNSCRA second Royal Rumble. I believe he had an early draw and went out early there too. He's doing a little better this time around. But he is still in the lead and he's putting a, a lot of ground ahead of Zachary Robinson. They made some adjustments on that car to try and make it better and it seems to have worked. That car is going lightning speed right now around this Phoenix Lake circuit. In our 13th round today, there is Zachary Robinson, car number 5, and he's kind of chuckling as he looks in his rearview mirror as he sees Joseph Bryant out of the race. So he dispelled of his rival very quickly, which is kind of a shame for the viewers. We, we kind of wanted to see what that would have turned into. But uh, I think I did. Uh, yeah, I'm getting word that he actually did laugh over his radio with some team chatter about uh, Joseph Bryant wrecking himself out of the race. Ray Takeda. It's kind of a shame she was unable to stay in the event long enough to win it for RGE. Matt Duell was their most successful driver in this Royal Rumble. He stayed in the most rounds. Joseph Bryant kind of kicking himself over the radio. He was hoping to eliminate Ray Takeda without having to wreck himself, but unfortunately it did not work that way. He crosses the line. Four cars go out. We go to the next round. Here is round 14. There's Jerry Guerra. Car number 78 for Blue Motorsports, which is kind of ironic because both, uh, both him and his brother Nicholas drive predominantly green race cars. So the two green cars on Blue Motorsports. Also, I also want to mention that this car and uh, the car Nicholas Guerra will run later on in this event will not be running the majority of the schedule. For the first 10 races, um, the Guerras are going to run DuPont Rainbow Warrior paint schemes. As kind of an homage to uh, the Jeff Gordon car as the DuPont sponsorship is going to be leaving halfway through the 2013 season. So, giving it kind of a farewell run as tribute, they will switch to the 7-Up and Sprite cars following, following that campaign to race 10. Jerry Guerra leading the race at the current moment. And these drivers, I think they're going to take it a little easier this round as we don't have many cars on track we just eliminated four drivers so these drivers on track see that anything can happen with this Royal Rumble anyone can get eliminated at any time and in any kind of bulk number so these three I believe are just gonna take it easy this round just kind of ride around the track build up the numbers a little more and then get a little bit more competition then Seth Cole usually would be trying to pass Jerry Guerra right now he Seems to have a better car, but he's kind of holding back as we hear based on radio chatter. But whoa, almost tries to eliminate Jerry Guerra. I think uh, Seth Cole did not follow what I said, said earlier that it was going to be an easy round. He tries to eliminate Jerry Guerra. But it's going to fail. I, I don't think he's going to put too much effort into it, though. Because he could he could have rammed into the bumper of Jerry Guerra a little harder. I know he could have. But I think he just wants to make just light, light jabs. He doesn't want to risk anything like teammate Joseph Bryant did by wrecking himself off the track as well. So he's just going to, he's going to, if he has an opportunity, he may go for it. But uh, he's not going to, he's not going to just plow into Jerry Guerra gung-ho. But here he goes. He's going to try and pass Jerry Guerra. Maybe see if he can fake him up the racetrack. Uh, it doesn't work just yet. They battle into the first turn. I believe this is the uh, final lap. Seth Cole running too wide with Jerry Guerra. Zachary Robinson watches close behind. He's just kind of taking it easy this round. Jerry Guerra trying to prove himself in this series. And I believe he also has to qualify for the Bristol race as well. And so close for Jerry Guerra. But he stays on track as we head to the finish line. These three drivers are all going to stay in the Royal Rumble for the next round. Which will be in the next part. We are going to commercial. Samantha Yankee, Dustin Caps, and Billy Bishop yet to come. See you soon.